In the late 1800s, Italians immigrated to the United States via New York's own Ellis Island, bringing with them a recipe for something called pizza. In 1905, America's first pizzeria was open on Spring Street in Little Italy. With so much history, it's no surprise New York still churns out some of the most authentic pizza pies in North America. So if you want the country's best pizza, you come to New York. And if you want to learn how to make it, you come to Pizza Acaza Pizza School here on the Lower East Side. We're here with Mark Bello. He is the founder of Pizza Acaza Pizza School. Now, you don't have a traditional culinary background. You're a born and bred New Yorker who loves pizza. So how did you go from eating pizza to teaching people how to make it? Basically, um, so yeah, I don't have a culinary degree. I, was, uh, I have a master's degree in sculpture. And when I was studying art, um, I was doing my graduate studies at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And while I was there, uh, if you're familiar with Chicago-style pizza, it's different than the pizza that you know I grew up eating here uh, in New York. So uh, basically, I just started for fun making my own pizzas, and uh, and I got good at it. And for me, the, the whole evolution of what I did uh, was just kind of this process of trial and error over the last, you know, and this started about 20 years ago. So we're teaching people how to make restaurant quality pizzas using uh, you know, the tools that they have in their home kitchen already. So pizza a casa literally means pizza at home. Pizza at home, yeah. And like you said, your class teaches students how to make pizza given the limitations of a home kitchen. So what is it about a home kitchen that prevents me from using a recipe from my favorite pizzeria? Ovens, temperature of, of ovens. You know, your home oven is typically going to top out at about 500 or 550 degrees. Pizzeria ovens, depending on the style of the pizza, uh, can be anywhere from 500 to 1,000 degrees. So what we're showing people how to do is how to make a, make a dough. If you're reliant on a mom and pop grocery store, here are the things that you can buy to replicate this uh, in your home setting. So what can students expect to learn during one of your classes? Do you include the making of ingredients from scratch or just the assembly and baking of a pizza? We make the dough from scratch. Um, and then, the, you know, the, 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 we teach a sensibility about pizza making because, you know, pizza making, you know, I think, okay, it's dough, sauce, and cheese, but there is a balance that really makes or breaks how your pizza comes on. Something, a, a major, we, we say pizza epiphany that people have in our classes uh, is that you actually make a better pizza when you use less than you actually think you need. Now, I was actually surprised to learn that a lot of restaurant owners have taken your class, which really speaks to the quality of your technique. But what is the typical class size and experience level of your students? You know, it's really interesting because we'll have a class where we'll have, you know, nine, ten year old kids here with their grandparents, and then we'll have uh, restaurant tours here and aspiring pizzeria owners here. And we manage to give an experience and an education to both simultaneously. So you don't need a pizza oven to make what we're going to be making today, but I'm sure there are a few pro tools that students are going to need to pick up. So what are the basic tools that you're going to need to put your new skills to work right after class? Um, really, I mean, you can make a pizza on a cookie sheet, you know, but to take it to the next level, to really get that crust, to get that sort of, you know, that crispiness and, and a char, if you wanted, like what you get in a pizzeria. In a pizzeria, the oven, whether it's a gas oven or an electric oven or a wood-fired oven, the pizzas are baking on the floor of the oven. And the floor of the oven uh, is hot, you know? So what we do is in our ovens, we use either what's called a pizza stone or a baking stone or a baking steel. Um, and the stone is a ceramic piece and the steel is a metal piece and they go in the oven and as the ovens are heating, it's also heating that surface. So when you make your pizza, you dress it, you build it on what's called a peel, which is a wooden paddle. You, when you see it, you'll know exactly what it is. A big sort of spatula that the pizzeria, you know, pizza makers use. And then you have that dressed pizza and you open the oven and you lay the pizza onto the hot surface. And that, not only are you, of course, having the heat from the oven cooking it, but you're having heat below from the baking stone or baking steel that's cooking the crust. And also that, piece of material is like a capacitor that keeps your oven temperature high. Well obviously you can't come to pizza school without learning to make a pizza so should we get our aprons on and get to class? Of course. 
Okay, so now that we have our aprons on, what's the first step to making pizza? Uh, get a phone and dial, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Order in. All yeah, right, no. Uh, we're gonna make dough. Okay. So cool, so there's yeast, an active dry yeast, simple to find. So that is now in uh, some warm water. We're gonna stir that right now to dissolve. Okay. So does everybody start off making the same kind of pizza or do you get to choose? Yeah, I mean, in our class, um, we make the dough from scratch, like what we're doing now. And then everybody, uh, the, a batch of dough like we're gonna make today is gonna yield about two pounds or about a kilogram of dough, which we're gonna break into uh, four, four balls. And that means that during the course of the class, you get to make up to four pizzas. So what are the four pizza options? Classic margarita. We do some, some interesting uh, you know, traditional pizza from Rome, which actually involves sliced potatoes. Um, we do a white pizza with ricotta, garlic, and mozzarella. And, um, and th this gives people ideas of like, okay, here are all the toppings that are available to us. What, what's my masterpiece gonna be? All right, so a little bit of sugar. That's to feed the yeast. Give that a stir. Okay, cool. Okay. And then we're gonna set this aside, and when we come back, we're gonna notice bubbles, we're gonna notice fo uh, foam on there. That's, that's our indication. We're, we're actually doing what's called proofing, and that's our proof that the yeast is active. Okay. So just set this in front of you out of the way. Uh, we've measured our flour. It's 20 ounces of flour. Um, we need a tablespoon of salt. Just dump it in. Go ahead. Measure your salt before your oil because if you measure your oil first, then you have to wash the spoon before you measure the salt. Uh, yeah, so, or you could just do that, you know, where you know how many counts it is? Uh, that I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, give me a tablespoon. Okay. How many counts was that? Uh, uh, I right. didn't count. Go here, try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right to eight, the top. Right nine, to the top. ten. Ten. So if you don't want to measure, it's ten seconds squeezing. We used a very little bit of oil. A lot of recipes actually call for no oil whatsoever. I like a little oil because it gives the dough elasticity and it also aids in the browning. I don't like a lot of sugar, which a lot of dough recipes have to, for the browning of the dough. We just used a very, very finite amount of sugar, just a, enough to activate the yeast. So what do you think are the essentials to a good pizza? Uh, good ingredients, good technique, and love. Love. Yeah. People, people ask, they're like, I mean, think about it. It's like if you have the same ingredients, okay, you have an oven that gets to a certain temperature, um, why is some pizza so good and some pizza not good, you know? And a lot of the reason is just like the, the care that goes into making it. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, yeah, you did it very nicely there. Pour the yeast That's water, it. just sort of in around the dough like that. So we made a little kind of a... Kind of like a moat around a castle. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. And then um, just kind of start stirring, bringing that flour and- From the middle into the, yeah, the moat? You're just kind of gradually bringing wet and dry ingredients together. That's where I'm gonna mess it all up. My brother says that I'm the only person that can burn jello. So, wait till he sees this, right? Uh, yeah, some, <laughs> I mean, people come to our classes who claim that they, they can't make toast, you know? Yeah. And they leave and they're actually, delighted with the fact that they not only can they cook, but they can do something like exceptionally, exceptionally well. Spatula out, grab your dough, and just kind of use the dough to clean the bowl. Can you smell now that kind of doughy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, smells good, right? Yeah, it smells really good. See, I see where the sculpture came yeah. in. I'll tell you, mixing up, I used to do a lot of mold making with plaster, and mixing plaster is a lot like mixing dough in that you want to gradually bring the water and the dry ingredients together so you have a smoother paste as opposed to something that's lumpy and full of like dry bits and wet bits and stuff like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I wanna do before we start kneading also is just pick up your dough and just kind of like turn it inside out like this. Okay. Break open any leftover little knots of flour, water, salt, yeast that might be in there. Mine's like really sticky in the Mine middle. Mine is too. That's oh, okay. Good. Yep. Sticky's fine because uh, it's easy to adjust sticky dough by kneading flour into it as we work. Okay. Is there a texture you don't want? Uh, you want sm smooth, uh, I mean, you don't want a big lumpy Pocket mess. Of... We're, yeah, we're getting rid of that right now, so. Okay. Cool. Like, it's really sticky. Yeah, look, me too. <laughs> look, it's all good. Okay, back down on the table. Okay, I'm gonna grab some more flour from my table. So, yeah, and then what we're gonna do is, as we work it, it's we're stuck. gonna shake flour onto it. Okay. And then watch, push it, turn it, push it. 
Which one's the flower? So the one with the bigger holes is the, okay. is, is the white flower. Do I just... Yeah. Sticky hand grab? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> See? <laughs> Why I burn jello. Now look, same thing. Keep your hands clean is there, as can I, Is there like such a thing as too yeah. much flour? Keep going. Yeah? Yeah. You want to get this dough to the point where it's like sticky, like like not sticking to the table of your hands, but you know, just slightly tacky. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So for kneading, less of like shiatsu and more sort of deep tissue. Deep tissue. <clears throat> so far, am I like the best oh my. <laughs> pizza maker you've ever seen? Yes. I can retire now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it gets any better than this. So. Prodigy. <clears throat> Beautiful. Oh, it looks really nice. Yeah, very nice. I did a really nice cool. job there. Yep. If you want to set aside dough to use it for later, where would you store that? In the refrigerator, the freezer? Depends. If you're going to use it right away, you want it in a warm environment so it okay. dries. And if you want to store it, put it somewhere cold. I mean, flour on your work surface. Okay. You know. I feel like yours shakes better than mine. Here, I'll trade you. Okay. Well, let's see. Yep. Uh, uh. Nope. <laughs> Okay. All right. Great. All right. So, beautifully risen bowl of dough. Great work. Just gently lift that lid up. Okay. And then ease that dough onto the table. Boom. Beautiful. All right. Cool. All right. Now, a little bit of flour on the top. Shiatsu it. So what I want you to do first is just basically, there's a little technique that we use, we call it uh, soft bongos, all right? Soft bongos. Yeah, just kind of like you're okay. playing the bongos on here, patting it down. Into a circle? Kind of flattening it, yeah, into a okay. larger circle. All right, cool. This looks so, like, when, you know when you make those ornaments and you put like your handprint? <laughs> yes, there you go. In fact, I have a bunch of those from my nieces. Yeah. So I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. All right, pick up the dough now and just basically okay. Holding the edge just and using gravity, you're basically kind of stretching. Like okay. This. What if you rip a hole? What do you do? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to patching later. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Right okay, there. yours is a lot there, 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 bigger there. than mine. So focus on the, the areas that are thicker. So you don't necessarily have to be going in a circular motion the whole time. No, if you, you have want some to just kind spots. of work the dough as you see you need to work it. All right. This All is right. that thing you were describing? It's called a peel. A peel. No, wait, here, I'm, I'm going to show you. Ready? Yep. Make a hole. Am I supposed to make a hole? No, I just did. I mean, oh, you, okay. you can too. I'm going to show you a fix. So, this is a little bit of semolina flour to keep your dough from sticking. Lay your dough down onto the peel like that. Okay. All right, you ready? See that? Yep. Done. Oh, okay. Cool. I'd almost venture to say mine looks better than yours. <laughs> Careful. Cool. Now, in uh, honor of your. Uh, your Italian mother, let's do like a Neapolitan, in in theory, I mean, we don't have a wood-fired oven here, we're using a home oven, but let's go kind of classic margarita. Okay. You know, mozzarella, tomato sauce, basil. Delicious. Delicious, perfect. And for me, uh, we'll go, we'll do kind of like a New York style. All right, fresh mozzarella, taste. This is from Dupalis. All right. Those like the best cheese I've ever had. Pretty great, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what you want to do is, we're talking about less is more, take a look. So here's the cheese right here. Okay. That's one, literally how, that's for that half, that's all the cheese we're going to put. Yep. So okay. basically, do that on the second, uh, the okay. other side. This is just going to melt out and cover? Yep. Oh, wait okay. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's you. I'm doing New York. So you notice your sauce hasn't gone on yet, right? So what's, did you make this sauce? I did. And we show that in the class. We go through the sauce. Part. Okay. Can't give up all the secrets. Right, obviously. So, okay. So, all right. So what I want you to do is I want you to give me sauce kind of like that all over the pizza. Just little dribbles? Give me like a Jackson Pollock. Okay. Right? Yeah. Not too heavy on so the just sauce. just throw it at it. Yep. Well, so you've got that. Now I've got my, uh, this is that shredded mozzarella. Taste this. And that will kind of give you, so... There's your, there's your difference just from a flavor perspective. This is a little saltier. Yeah. And also, you want to remember when you're making... Wait, am I supposed to put this on here? No, that's for you. Okay. Yes. Um, this, is, this is what we're doing for the traditional kind of New York slice right here. And then Do I just, just take it off? <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> It'll be fine. We won't tell you your Neapolitan ground. Don't put that. Shredded on this one. Yeah. 
I'll just take it off here. Nobody uh, has to know. And then the last thing, I like to add some grated cheese on here. Just as a finishing kind of garnish. Parmesan? Uh, this is a uh, pecorino romano. Yours smells good. Yeah. What, this, yeah, so mm -hmm. you're gonna do the same on there. Oh, okay. So go ahead, grab the grater, grab that. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Doing a great job. Look at that. Get it? Great job. Oh, oh wow. Thank you very much. So yeah, give me and take it right to the edge there. The All the way to the edge? Yep. Okay. So that the crust isn't boring? Uh, yeah, it'll, you'll get nice little toasted bits of cheese on there. It's looking good. All right, all right, beautiful. All right. All right. Now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna first put mine in the oven so you'll see how the technique is done and then I'm gonna coach you on how to do it yourself. All right. Yours looks really nice. Thank you, yours as well. Okay. Next time you just do that with like no hesitation. It's so beautifully done. I thought it was gonna burn my arm. Your first pizza successfully launched in the oven. Okay, so what okay. you're gonna do is you're gonna get under it, okay? And then just kind of shove forward. And even if the pizza goes back, the back of the wall, the back of the oven will kind of push it on here. That is a beautiful pizza. Look, oh, look at that. Nice color on the bottom. So basically I've got my basil and I'm doing little ribbons right there. Is there a little trick to that cut there too? Here we go. Get it. Weak. Gangster. Gangster. Hmm, I'm okay. slightly yeah. less gangster. No, 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 watch. So you get, you get that crust. Okay. So you forgot, you you left out that step. Cool, you ready? You wanna try it? Yeah. Okay. Mine's better than yours. Oh, my. <laughs> um, a little bit? Yeah, you're hired. So. Mine's fresher. She who claims her, you said your brother says you burn jello. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yeah. Not burnt. First pizza ever. And better than many pizzas that you will have in a pizzeria. What? <laughs> Try my pizza. Oh, it looks beautiful. Very good, better than yours. Oh. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs>